When you meditate, you can close your eyes, but you can't close your ears. There's going to be a fair amount of noise in the orchard for the next several days. And one of the challenges that presents as you're meditating is how not to let the noise disturb you. As John Child once said, it's not that the noise is disturbing you, you're disturbing the noise. In other words, your commentary on the noise is what's creating the disturbance. Sounds come at the ear, they're not unbearable, and you don't have to make a lot of commentary on them. You don't have to fight them. Think of your mind as being like a window with a screen. The breeze goes through the screen, and because the screen is not catching the breeze, the breeze doesn't disturb the screen. So don't try to resist the sound. Think of it going right through you and not having any effect on you. We talk about being proactive in the meditation, but there are certain things you have to accept that you can't change. That's where you develop equanimity. Now the Buddha doesn't say simply, well, just accept, 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 and don't react. He says if you want to get the mind into a genuine state of healthy equanimity, you want to have a source of joy inside, either the joy that comes from getting the mind to settle down, or the joy that comes when you begin to see what's going on in your mind. And then you can get past things that used to tie you down, things that used to obstruct you. You understand them to the point where you can really let them go. And there's a joy that comes with that when you finally overcome one of your mind's obstacles. So find a source of joy inside. As for the sounds, they're just going to do their business. You have ears, you can't stop them. You can put earplugs in, but after a while the earplugs get uncomfortable, and then you have to deal with the pain of the ears. It's a lot easier just to say, well, let the sound come through, because the sound doesn't pain your ears. It's just there, like a lot of the other things that are in the world that are just there. If we had to wait for the world to be perfect before we could meditate, we'd never get to meditate. There's certain things we have to put up with. Okay, we put up with them, work around them, and find an alternative sense of joy inside. And that way our equanimity doesn't become dull, resentful. It's a natural state of not being affected by something because you've got something good, an alternative source of pleasure inside through your concentration, through your insight. Focus there, and the sounds will be in the background, as they always are. We have sounds of crickets at night, and sometimes they're even louder than the sound of the, the buzz saws in the orchard. But they don't bother us. So you have to ask yourself, well, why is the mind upset about the sound in the orchard? Because, well, I came here to the monastery, I came to find some quiet, and these people are cutting trees down. There's worse. There was a woman who came one time to the monastery in Rion, and the day after she arrived, F whatever started flying overhead. The American bombers, they were on doing war games with the Thai military. She said it was quieter in Bangkok than it was at the monastery. And so she went back. But here it's just a little bit of a buzz sound now and then. So to just go through your mind without leaving a trace. Make your mind unresistant to it. And it's not going to hang around.